Hello, welcome to this part of our tutorial. Now we will want to look at how to model an horizontal well, so we'll just be quick about it. If you've not watched part one and part of our tutorial, I recommend you do that because um, it will actually help you to understand what you're doing here. So we will just go directly into the modeling. So I go to options and um, options. Um, I have oil and water, and that's what I'm going to use black oil, of course. Single stage operation. I'll leave all these at the default values. There's no artificial lifting, so let's continue. So I quickly come here, and my solution gas 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 oil ratio is 400. Uh, sorry for that. 400. My oil gravity. Oil gravity is 30 api. Gas gravity is 0.75, and then my water salinity is about 50,000, the impurities are zero, I do not have data to match, so I'll continue. Okay, let me go to the division survey, I do not need surface equipment, so we go directly. Now this is where you have to pay particular attention. Now this is where uh, what informs Prosper, Prosper will know, will detect from here if what actually modeling is an horizontal, uh, deviated or, you know, Horizontal well is actually deviated well, but the angle of deviation is actually almost 90. Because I don't think it's very possible to get 90 on the dot. I say it's very close to 90 degrees. Okay, or you modeling in vertical well. Now at the surface, I'll start at the surface where I have zero and zero. And look at this aspect. We have the cumulative displacement and the angle. Okay. Now we've gotten we've drilled to a depth of 80,050. And of course, the same thing here, 80,050. Angle is still zero. Now we moved further to a depth of 10,050. But the TVD, now this is the measured depth, 10,050. The TVD, TVD remains at 80,000. Oh, sorry. It's supposed to be 8,050. Oh, sorry. It ought to be 8,050. So I'll quickly correct that. 8,050. 8,050. Okay. Okay, so that's what we have. So of course, you've seen that the angle here is 90 degrees. So for that error, it is 90 degrees, and the cumulative displacement is 2,000. So this tells you that this is actually an horizontal well. Again, we can plot this to see what's happening. So you see, look at um, the versus angle, the true vertical depth versus angle. All right. You look at that is the yellow line. You'll see what happens. It comes here up to eight thousand and fifty, and then it goes right straight horizontal. Okay, so that's that. And the measured depth also shows versus angle. The red line shows what's happening. Well, let's continue. Now we have um, and we have tubing and casing for this. So our tubing is at um. Now whatever you're doing here, okay. And the ring is at 7,800, 7, sorry. And the inside diameter is 3.992. The roughness goes to 0 0.0018. Okay, so while the casing is at 8,050, sorry, 8,050. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> okay, so the inner diameter is 8.3, and the roughness is also 0.1800. 0.0018 so we continue and the next thing should be a geothermal gradient at the surface the temperature is at 70 degrees while at the depth of 8050 the temperature is at 200 which is our reservoir temperature the same thing happens at the depth of 10050 reservoir temperature is still at 200 and our BTU no, I'm sorry overall the transfer is 8 now let's say something about this we say this is the overall heat transfer. So it covers all aspects of the heat transfer, the conduction, the convection, and the radiation. So it's a combination of all of them. So you're not dealing with specifics, but with the general stuff. Okay, so let's let's continue. And um, I'll allow this to be here, the heat capacities to remain at these values. I can plot if I want to, and I see what's happening. Okay, so we are done. So let's just go in. 
the next thing is um to do this i come to my ipr data so we need to select a correlation uh, model to use i want to use this is horizontal while we see this and this well okay so but the first one says no flow boundary and the second one says constant pressure upper boundary okay so now this is um when there there are no boundaries of course uh let's say sorry okay we're going to use the no flow boundaries and we're going to enter skin by hand our reservoir pressure is at um Okay, the reservoir pressure is at 4,000. Um, the reservoir temperature is at um, 200. The water cord is at zero at this point. So we'll go to input data. The reservoir permeability is at 150. And it does see the thickness is 100. The wall bore radius is at 0 0.354. The horizontal anisotropy is 1. While the Vertical anisotropy is 0.1. The length of the wall is um 2,000. Uh, the reservoir length is 5,000. The reservoir width is 5,000. So this is actually um, a square reservoir. Okay. Distance from center to that should be half of that. Since it's a reservoir distance here is also 2,500. And distance from bottom to center is um, 50. Yeah, because uh, the thickness is 100. Okay, so we have half of that 50. And this is because of this. Okay, let's continue. We we get the skin. The skin is plus five. And what we have to do is to calculate. With this, we are done with the modeling. The next thing we have to do is you have your open, open flow, absolute open flow potential here, the formation PI, and all that. We have the IPI. I have explained this in, um, I think, in the part two of our tutorial. So if you want to know what the PI means and the AOF and also the significance of the skin, please go to Prosper Part 2. Thank you very much. So we go to main at once. Now you're done with this, but we do not know the production rate of this. So, and um, we we'll want to know what if um, the perforation length changes. Yes, what happens, and what will be the effect of water cut? So let's just perform sensitivity analysis on this, and we'll wrap it up. From okay, um, so we we'll go to calculation. First, I want to know. Um, what rate this is producing at the top node pressure is 250 so let's do this without sensitivity data first and then we can check what effects that will have so we have that our oil rate is at 18,758 stb per day the gas rate is at 7 billion standard cubic feet and we have the liquid rate at 18,758 so we are not actually producing water since the liquid rate is equal to the oil rate and the water rate is there okay good um so i'm going back and uh, let's select some of these i want to know what will be the effect of the well length the length of the well what will be the effect of um, the water cut right and um i think this we should do um now well length the length of our well from what we entered from there was um, 5,000, right? Okay. Yeah. No, no, that was not the length of the well. The length of the well was um, 2,000. That was the length of our well. But let's see. Um, what if this length reduces? Or what if it becomes greater? Okay, so let's generate some data. I want to test length of the wall from 500. Uh, I go to 1000, to 1500, I go to 2000, which is our actual length, and then I go to 2500, and maybe 3000, and we could go on and on, but let's stop at that. The water cut we enter was 0%. What if the water cut increases? So let's test for 0. We also test for 10, 20, 
30, 40, 50, and um, you could continue up to 100, maybe take it up to 60. And all we have to do is to continue and then we'll perform the calculation again to take some seconds. So we'll come back once the calculation is done. Thing. Okay, the calculation is done. So all we have to do is um, we have different variables here at wall length of 500 and water code of zero. We have all rate of 12,000. And um, as the water code increases, the oil rate reduces. So we have 10 at water code of 10 oil rate of 10,000, what are cut of 20, oil rate of 8,000, what are cut of 30%, oil rate of 7,000 and all that. We could actually use a graph to see what's happening. Okay, so yeah, see what's happening. So the blue lines, um, okay, um, let's look at the variables, sorry, variables. Okay, so you could choose what you actually want to see. So let's see the effect of just the water cut for a wall length of 2000. So I am going, I want to use all rates, not liquid rates. So I go. So that's the effect of the water cut. So as the water cut increases, this is 4, 3, I think, 1, 2, 3, okay, 0. I have water cut of 0%. This is what we have. The rate is actually reducing as the water cut increases. That's what it says. Water cut of zero, water cut of ten percent, of twenty, of thirty. You could use this for the levels. Okay, thirty and that. So, increasing water cut leads to reduced production rate. Uh, let's see what happens at a fixed water cut of forty. How does sorry, uh, forty? How does the wall length affect that? Okay, so can go. So at a fixed water cut of uh, forty percent, we see that uh, the longer the well is, the more production you have. So the more quantity of oil you produce. So well length increases. Uh, as the well length increases, the oil rate increases. Okay. Anyway, that's the little information we can get from here, and um, that's how to perform this analysis. Thank you very much for watching the tutorial. So in this tutorial, we've actually looked at how to model horizontal well, horizontal well, and then how to do some sensitivity analysis. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and then also to comment if there anything you, if there is anything you do not understand or things you want me to cover in greater detail. Please use the comment section very well. See you. Thank you.